Hey, what's going on, Somerset family and students? My name is Andrew Medina. I get to serve as the youth pastor at Somerset Baptist Church. So glad you're joining us today for our Sunday school lesson. And <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, it's kind of weird because, and because as we talk about our lesson today, as we continue on in our curriculum talking about the seven seas in history, we're actually going to be diving into the all seven seas from beginning to end from Genesis to Revelations. And one thing that we need to continue to keep in mind is that from last week's lesson, we talked about briefly about the seven C's, right? And let's go over them briefly and talk about kind of like really what's going to be about. So basically, we're going to be reading the whole Bible. And for many of you, it's going to be, you know, you've never done that before. And this is something that you and I as Christians, we have to do. We have to take at heart because as Christians we need to take God's word seriously we need to believe that everything that God says is true and so we need to kind of really understand the concept that God's word gives us life remember in first Timothy the Apostle Paul where he preaches that all scripture is God breathed right we talked about the idea that this, these are the exact words of God and we're gonna be talking about uh, as the seven seas, and so the first sea, we go over the idea of creation. We talk about how God created everything, right? We, we talked about how God designed everything, and it was good. The second sea we talk, we, we're talking about is um, is is chaos, right? Or as I would like to call it, it is corruption. We talk about the idea that sin entered the world because of Ab and Eve's disobedience, and we're going to talk about that, how they decided that. They wanted to see things in their own eyes. That they thought, according to the enemy, the serpent, that they could be like God. And we'll go over that as we continue on reading the scriptures. The next scene we're going to be briefly talked about was catastrophe. We talked about how sin, there was so much wickedness in this world that we talked about how God wanted to wipe out everybody except for a man named Noah and his family. Because the scripture says that he was a righteous man and we talk about how God you know had the flood and the flood did happen and we have resources and we have God's Word that shows that the flood happened the next C was confusion right after the flood we talked about the idea of the Tower of Babel how everyone spoke one language and then they said they want to make a tower greater than the heavens greater than God and then God didn't want that to happen, so what did he do? He decided, to, he decided to change the languages and for them to expand into the world. And we have now different cultures, different religions, and different beliefs. But, as I, uh, but we understand that we, the Word of God is what we believe in, even though there are other cultures and other religions. We also talk about the importance of Christ how when sin entered the world that God had a master plan, that God had a way for us to bring us back to Him. And so God sent His Son Jesus, and we're going to be talking about His story, how He lived a sinless life and how He gave up His life for us so that He could save us from our sin and bring us back to the Father. Uh, the next C we talked about, uh, the next C was the cross. How uh, We briefly talked about that. How Jesus had to die for the sins of many. And we talked about the idea that Jesus had to die in order for us to be forgiven from our sins, in order for us to bring us back to the Father. We call that redemption. How Jesus redeems us and He buys us back and draws us closer to Him. And we receive grace and salvation through Jesus Christ, through the power of the cross. And then lastly, we talked about is completion. How we are complete in Christ. How He is the only one that gives us everything. And He is everything. And so with that being said, let's go over the first C. And the first C that we're going to be talking about this morning is creation. If you're taking notes, and I'm sure, I hope you are, it is creation. And so, and I felt that it was very appropriate that even though we're not meeting for the whole month, I thought it would be appropriate to do our first lesson outside in this beautiful weather, in this beautiful weather, and I found this, I happened to find this beautiful, you know, arc thingy, and it's just a great appropriate place to talk about creation. 
And notice that I'm wearing a jacket because it's very cold outside, but it is beautiful. This is a, uh, I'm actually coaching a basketball uh, basketball game. Um, uh, so this is so this is so I was able to find the same spot, and they were able to. Uh, so Saturday I was coaching a basketball game. I found the spot, and so I asked the one of the directors, "Hey, is it appropriate if I could record?" here if I could do a live session here and he said yes and sure enough I was able to do a pre-recording of for this lesson here this beautiful beautiful campus and this beautiful site here so with that being said lesson 12 lesson 12 is we're talking about how God created the universe and before we jump into the text jump into passages of scripture let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer Father God as we dig deep into your word I pray this morning that as we open up your word, that your word is clearly communicated, that Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, is highly exalted, and that these students are beautifully blessed. And it's your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So let's go and let's go over our theme verse. <clears throat> and our theme verse for this whole curriculum is found in Psalms in Psalms seventy uh, Psalm seventy three, where we read where we talked about how when I observe your heavens. The work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you set in place. What is a human being that you remember him? A son of man that you look after him. You made him little less than God and crown him with glory and honor. So David's talking about the vast beauty of God, talking about how God deliberately and designed and created the heavens and the earth. And so with that being said, if you have your Bibles... Join me in Genesis chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading from uh, the, whole, the whole scripture, 1 through 26, and I'm going to read it with just honest and goodness. And what I want you to do is something a little weird, but I want you to try this out. I want you to close your eyes, and as I read the passage of scripture, I want you to imagine these words coming to life in your mind, and as your eyes close, and I want you to just feel the tension as God does his mighty work. So, so if you're watching, if you're watching online, if you're watching this video, close your eyes and listen to the words of God this morning. This is Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was an evening, and there was a morning, one day. Then God said, let there be an expansion between the waters, separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. Evening came and then morning, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and, gather, and the gathering of the water he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And it was so. So the earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants according to their kinds, and tree, trees bearing fruit with the seed in its according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will serve as signs for seasons and for days and years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth and it was so God made the two great lights the greater light to rule over the day and the lesser light to rule over the night as well as the stars God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth to rule the day 
and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Evening came and then morning the fourth day. Then God said, let the water swarm with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kind. He also created every winged creature according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and then morning, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that crawl, and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness then they will rule they will rule the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky the livestock the whole earth and the creatures that crawl on the earth so god created man in his own image he created him in the image of god he created them male and female god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth, and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This will be food for you, for all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky, and for every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it. I have given every green plant for you. And it was so. God saw all that he made, and it was very good indeed. Everything, evening came, and then morning, the sixth day. Wow, what a beautiful text. Seeing the expanse of the universe being made, how God designed everything, and it was so how God created the expansion of the universe, how God created everything, how everything came into existence. And it was very good. When we read this text, we need to understand that many people today believe in evolution. Many people believe that there's no God, that there's no evidence of a person that created everything. And so, what I want you to do as a challenge, I want you to just once in a while go outside, look at the stars, look at how everything was designed. I remember one time when I went to the zoo with my wife and my family, uh, just, to, just for well, my, my niece wanted to go to the zoo, and we saw every of the creatures, and I told my wife, I told Vicky, and that it was just so, like, who, how, who could say that evolution made these creatures? Because you see, evolution believes that there, it was just a big bang. That it just poof, came out of nothing. But you see, we believe that someone had to design everything. If there was a design, there had to be a designer. If there was a plan, there had to be a planner. If there was a beautiful masterpiece of art, there had to be an artist. So there's nothing uh, that can come out of its own. So if you believe in evolution, then tell me how did all this come into place? Someone had to design it. And every scientist had to say that someone had to make this. And as Christians, we believe that God created the world. We read an entire book of Genesis 1 where we read that God planned and ordained everything. And everything that he made was good. It was good. Every detail of the stars, the moon, the sea, God created everything. 
And we need to understand that the term, if you look at Genesis 1-1, where God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We need to understand that first and foremost, heaven and earth, um, heavens and the earth is a, what we call a, 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 a figure of speech. Because you see, it, God didn't just create the heavens and the earth. God created everything. The expansion of the universe, God created everything. So when you, so, so, so we, we, we read, so if I was to describe like myself, I would describe myself from head, from head to toe. And you would know that in a figure of speech, I was, you, I would be talking about the entire figureness of my body. If I was to talk about Brooklyn, I would be just talking, not just talking about Br the city of Brooklyn. I will also be talking about the city of New York, right? So God created everything so heaven and the earth means further than that the expansion of the universe i'm going to read you a couple of scriptures uh the first one is in jeremiah chapter 23 and we read in jeremiah 23 in verse 24 the prophet jeremiah writes these words he says can a person hide in secret places where i cannot see him the lord's declaration do I not fill the heavens and the earth? The Lord's declaration. So God is saying, I did everything. I've created the expansion of the world. I've created everything. We also read in David's account in Psalm 69. In Psalm 69, verse 34, King David writes these beautiful words. He says, that heaven, that heaven and earth praise him the seas and everything that moves them so you see the vast beauty of god you see the power of god you see how he is omnipotent all powerful therefore he created everything lastly uh and nehemiah we talked about him in midweek uh nehemiah chapter 9 we read these words as we continue in our midweek series and goals Nehemiah 9 6 uh, he writes these beautiful words he says you Lord are the only God you created the heavens the highest heavens with all the stars the earth and all that is on it the sea and all that is in them you give them all of them you give life to all of them and all the stars of heaven worship you students when are we going to when are we going to understand that God created the, the expansion of the world just look outside just look around and see how God created everything you can't come and tell me that some that the Big Bang did this and it wasn't that that wasn't the case someone had to design the world someone had to design this beautiful place we call earth so you can't come and just tell me that this was poof out of dust out of nothing god with full intent with the power coming out of his mouth he designed everything so my encourage you as we continue this first sea of creation i want you to understand that God created the world, that God designed everything with full detail. And as we study together these next few weeks on the first C, you're gonna understand that this, that Jesus was there since the beginning. And you see how Jesus is also the creator of the universe. And so my encouragement to you as we close out this lesson, as we go to the detail of each of the of the six days of when God created the world, we need to first and foremost need to understand that God is all powerful, that God is all good, that God makes everything and the heavens and the earth goes beyond his power, that he goes beyond our understanding. He is a God that we can worship, that he is a God that we could uh, praise his name because he is worthy of it all. So let us remember that, to, that, that as in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's pray together. 
Father God, thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to preach your word and go over this beautiful lesson, this short lesson of how you created everything. So, Father, thank you for your richness and goodness. Thank you that you are a good Father and a mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for being our Savior. Continue to move us. Continue to show us your presence. We give the honor and glory to your name. In your name, continue as we pray. Amen. And amen. I, I want to thank you for joining me today for our Sunday school lesson. So if it's cold in your area, please get a jacket. Stay warm out there. Stay safe. Continue to pray for our country. Continue to pray for everything that's been going on. And, and continue to pray for our church as we continue to uh, heal uh, for those that have uh, been impacted by uh, COVID-19. So with that being said, I pray this blessing upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his goodness and richness and countenance be upon you and may he display to you each and every day his complete perfect peace. Students, you are dearly loved and I hope to see you again soon.